Okay, hello there. I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel, Life Home and My Linux Journeys. And in this journey, we're going to install a Fedora. Or I say I hesitate because it's a Fedora spin. And we'll get to that in just a second here. On DistroWatch page, they have the OS type is Linux and it's based independently. Its origin is USA. It lists here a bunch of different desktops. But as you'll see, when we get into uh, their spins and their alternative downloads, they have there's really a lot more to Fedora than meets the eye here. This is their homepage. It's uh, getfedora.org. This is where your journey will take you to start with. And at this point, you'll have to make up your mind or, or just look through and do some reading. Uh, about what each one of these does. Now, these are the official editions, which means they're the GNOME desktop. This one here, I didn't really know what it was. If you click on that, it'll open up this link. And this, a foundation for Internet of Things and Device Edge ecosystems, containerized applications, reliable operating system. So I'm not sure multiple ar architecture support. I'm not sure I might have to look into this one myself. IoT, I thought was for, well, it doesn't matter what I thought. <laughs> Looks like I was wrong. Anyway, this is their homepage. And if you scroll down, you'll eventually see spins. This is where you'd get like uh, XFCE or KDE Plasma, or it even says right there, and some other uh, Fedora spins, they're called. They're pre configured desktop environments. Here you can get the alternative downloads. This is some more for specific or testing architectures. But the one I'm going to be interested in in particular right now is the labs. And if you click on that, it'll open up this link. And this is their labs, labsfedoraproject.org. And you can see astronomy, comp neuro. So if you use a stargazer and you was into brain surgery, those first two right there would definitely interest you. <laughs> And it just goes on. Open creativity. This is uh, multimedia production. Play. Uh, this is the games edition that I'm going to install now. Uh, Python. Teach Python. A, ver a, a spin dedicated just for audio to create it or whatever. Then you have a security lab and a robotic suite and a scientific. Now, I would have loved to have had those options when I was about 15. <laughs> but they're, I'm not putting them down by no means. I'm saying I would have learned all of that if I could have. If you click on, let's see, where was that? If you click on the labs and find this and then click on games, it'll open up this page, which will tell you a little more about the edition itself. Get an opportunity right off to download it. Uh, shows you some of the featured uh, applications like uh, Extreme Tuck Racer, BZ Flag, Free CIV, Warzone, etc. And you get a chance to download it. This would be their alternative downloads page. This is for if you're looking to download something through a torrent rather than a direct download. Here, this is what this is for. This would be something else different. But it, in my case, I actually clicked on that when I downloaded uh, Fedora 35, the GNOME edition. And here's their doc page, which you can see from right. Help documentation. And <laughs> the directions you can go on this page alone is just mind boggling. You could study that for a year and never, never get halfway through it, probably. It's even got a section on older, older releases. And here's a, a page under their docs there that I found very interesting. I always ask myself, what does a Linux distribution really have in mind and who are they building their system for? And this is a really good read. I mean, I don't know how true everything is. Obviously, you, you're reading it. <laughs> you wasn't there when most of this stuff happens and they talk about it. But if you just take it at their word, which I'm going to, uh, really very nice. It talks a lot about what they do and how they how they feel about doing it, our mission, our vision, 
etc. So I've done enough talking. Uh, I'll provide those links where you can look for yourself there. So I've got Fedora. Game, Fedora 35, the games edition set up in my virtual box. I give it 64 gigs of RAM, or 6 gigs of RAM. That's going to be a lot of RAM for a VM, wouldn't it? Give it two cores of my processor. I have enabled the EFI. I have not turned the video memory all the way up, but I will now. And we're going to use the default graphics controller. And I give it a 69.5 gig hard drive. So I'm going to click on the start button. Should be able to start right up. Now, this is a, a great option right here. It says, test this media and start the Fedora games live. So if you just downloaded this and you just stuck it in here and booted up to it, I would test it. It'll take a, about three minutes, but it would be well worth it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start Fedora Games 35 or Fedora 35 Games Edition. I don't know if we got the, I don't know what we'll do with the, resolution yet we're gonna find out try to stretch it over there and see if it stayed with me and it did okay and i believe we get the xfce desktop in the games edition and we do and before i hit the installer let's just look at the games category on the iso so you got action games, there must be 10 there. Adventures, just one. Arcades, there must be 12 or 15 there. Block games, four or five. Six games under board games. Only one game under card games. But I think if you open that up, it has a bunch of different games you can play. But I guess I was wrong. <laughs> then you know the volume works right out of the box. So we'll come back to this. Let's go ahead and get the installer. So here it is there. We'll install the hard drive. And I didn't do any pre-configuring of the disk itself. Sometimes you open up Gparty. So we're going to use English and United States. Whatever yours is, scroll through there, select it. And when you're ready, click, click Continue. And every, this two, these two categories are not, they don't have caution flags or anything on them, and so that means they're good. The network and host name, we'll get to that. But first one you see is under system, and it says the installation destination. So here's our disk. It's already selected it by default, and we're going to say great. But we're going to do custom partitioning rather than the automatic part partitioning. I'd like to make additional space available or encrypt the data. So that's not bad, but I'm going to do the custom. And I'm going to say done. And I'm going to select standard partition. And right here on the bottom, you see it's got 69.5 gigabytes of available space. I'm going to say add. First mount point would be boot EFI. Then we're going to enter the amount in megabytes. What did that say right there when it came up? 512 lowercase m equals megabytes. That's what we're going to do. All right. Add that mount point. And right here it says boot EFI, 512 megabytes, and it's going to reformat it to a VFAT or a FAT32. Next, we're going to get a little swap space. Select that. And this will be, we can just go 6 capital G. Actually, I made it 9 gigs. We can go 9. Capital G, and by the way, uh, NumLox is on by default. We're going to add this mount point, and here there is no mount point, but it has 9 gigabyte capacity, and it's going to reformat it to swap, whatever that format is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to need another partition that'll go under uh, slash, which is C drive for a Windows user. And let's see, we're going to give this about 24 gigs. But that would be megabytes or megabyte. Actually, you're right. All I got to do is go 24 capital G. <laughs> Make that easy instead of making it hard. Here we're going to reformat it. It's slash point is root 24 gigs. All right, now, out point here, we're going to say home, which will be the same as the D drive. And I'm just going to click on add mount point and see if it dedicates the rest of it. 
it did so that would have been home it's 36 gigabytes gonna be reformatted everything here is good Boot, uh, sda1 is the efi sda2 is the well, actually listed sda3 as swap huh that's interesting the way they've done that so i'm good to go here i'm gonna click done and uh should tell me what it's going to do here we're going to create an efi swap and two partitions we're going to accept the changes now you'll notice that uh oh that these flags are gone so we're going to create a a root account and we're going to enable it and we're going to need a password and i'll be surprised it's going to tell me my password is too short, but if you want to use it anyway, allow root SSH login with password. Correct. Right here it says the password is too short. You have to press done twice to confirm it. I'm going to confirm it by doing it twice. Well, maybe I've done it too fast. Nope. All right, come on. <laughs> there we go that took forever now this doesn't have any flags but we're going to go ahead and click on it and this says full name so that would indicate that you can use your capitals we're going to make this user the administrator we're going to require a password to use the account and we're going to give it a password and it's going to say once again it's too short but we're going to go to advanced here and we here's where you can put yourself in some other groups so we're going to say audio and disk and video now if you get it wrong right here you get a red flag and you won't be able to go any further just there's no spaces only commas in between the groups if you know a bunch of group names you can put them all in there but we're going to do that later for now we got wheel audio disk and video save and we're done now we should be ready to install. Password is too short. Run it again. All right. We're ready to begin this installation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll minimize this. As you might can tell, I am running Fedora on this machine right here. And I, I'm going to make a video on this. I found so much intriguing stuff that I, just, I couldn't believe it. Where is uh, here it is. I've made plenty of notes. Creative commands got Fedora three notes. This is not Fedora three. This is a bunch of other. This is Fedora thirty five. That's mislabeled there. In fact, let me rename that right now. All right. I got a user's guide, but that's Fedora Core 6, so I'm not sure how pertinent it is. I, I got it because I thought, well, I'm going to look through it and just see what's changed. Like I learned that LSBLK command was not available on Fedora Core 3. <laughs> Here's one listing the, all, what I had to do to get flat packs and Etcher and some other programs installed fonts i had to do some stuff to get fonts installed the ones i wanted handbrake you don't just install handbrake you install handbrake hyphen or dash gui gui and here's some stuff i got for listing all the packages that are installed on your system so let's see where this is at real quick here we just started it's 20 percent. so i'm gonna pause this video and I'm going to close out all of this because I don't think we're going to come back to it. I'll make sure all of this gets in the show notes and as titles. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and come back. It's running the post and state installation scripts. And wow, just like that, it's finished. <laughs> so it's 1114. I'm going to say from beginning to end, this took about nine minutes. All right, so I'm going to say finish the installation. And that didn't say reboot, but we're gonna what we're gonna do is just power off. Open up the V-Box. I'm gonna left click on that ISO and untick it. I'm also going to 
take that out of there. We don't need to see that anymore. I do use it. Here's our boot screen. It's even got a rescue in there already. Uh, I use it during the installation uh, to see if the Wi-Fi is working, or not the Wi-Fi, but the internet is working, or the hard drive is spinning, uh, what looks like the, I, the CD is spinning, <laughs> the image file. All right, remember uh, where it was at there on the screen. Very nice. All right. Finishing the setup. And we'll get the log in with our short but passable password. <laughs> I, I really do not like that wallpaper. That's <laughs> just too, I don't know what it is and it's too wild. All right, so saying we got volumes, let's look back into their games. Oops. Other than that, you're going to get the regular uh, firewall, the regular, all the regular stuff that you're going to get in the XFCE desktop. You're going to get it right here. And I believe the whisker menu is even available. Let's find out real quick. Whisker menu. All right. So this is uh, XFCE. Uh, 4.16 on Fedora Linux 35. Let's go back and find that games. Like I say, all this, most of this stuff will be in your typical default application installation anyway. Okay, so I know there's a game. So there it is. Action, Alien Blaster. <laughs> Player one. Try arcade. <laughs> Quit and die. Oh, nice volume work. That looked like an interesting game, really. Astro Menace, I played that when I was young. Er, I see we got 582 available updates, but I'm not going to do that. No Gravity. I don't know what hardly any of these games are. Probably only 2% I know what they are. I can guess at some of them. I know what Extreme Tuck Racer is. Uh, Super Tux Car Hyperspace. I think I've played those, one of those. I think I have. Block games, Techno Ball Z, board games. Oh, wow. Card games. Still only one card game. That's okay. If you want another one, they're available. Pingus, Pike Night Dreams, Role Playing Games, Role Playing Games? Oh, okay, I understand that. <laughs> I thought, uh oh, they might have went X on me. Simulations, Planets, Sports, Games, Ultimate Stunts, X Moto, I know, I recognize that. That's a motocross deal. Battle, Battle for Westnoff, I recognize that. That was on the webpage a while ago, I believe. Oh, yeah. War Mux, War Zone, Tux Typing. So you get a lot of games. I'm not going to go through. I will do this <laughs> immediately. None. Thank you. <laughs> I like, personally, I like this one. The, for the I came off of Fedora Core 3, and I like it. Anyway, that's Fedora 35, Fedora Linux 35. On a XFC de XFCE desktop with the games edition. Okay, I'm going to call it quits. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch you on another video. Peace out. Bye.